Hi guys and welcome in the next video. So like I said in the previous video, today we're going to continue the topic of the user alarms and we're going to talk a little bit how to make your own user alarms. Ready? Let's get started. Okay. So what are the user alarms, guys? Uh, those are the messages that will uh, show up on the top of the screen of the Teach Pendant saying that something is not going as planned. So we can use them in order to create mistakes or uh, to, to, to create errors or tell the operators uh, what's going on with the robot. So for example, you can say that the clamp faulted to close or open or there should be a part, but there is no, uh, there is no part. So basically it gives us an option of creating uh, custom alarms that uh, we can say what they do when something specific happens. So that's going to be an add-on to the, fa to the uh, funnel alarms that are pre-programmed in the robot. Sounds like a cool feature, right? I think so too. Uh, so let's get to it. So what do you need basically is just simply go to the user alarm screen and over there you can edit your own alarms at the severity of the alarms. So that's the thing we discussed in the previous video. If you haven't seen it, take a look. Uh, I will link it at the top. So you can say basically how important that alarm is and what robots should do when that alarm occurs. That's why I wanted to talk about this first. So now we can actually create the real alarm and the robot will behave as we want. Uh, so what you can show up at the alarm, you can show up a message basically saying what's going to happen. You can you have a lot of alarms that you can use and program and call them whenever you want in a program and that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I think that's all very interesting guys. Uh, that's something new that's finally we're creating our own programs and our custom stuff that you can actually put on a robot and it's going to work the way you want. So if you're interested how to do it, stay with me and let's go to the exercises. Alright guys, and welcome to the next video. Okay, so uh, first thing first, let us uh, let me show you how to check the alarms and uh, how to find what's going on with the robot. So like I told you and like I showed you on the previous video, if you get alarm ever, you're most likely going to get a red fault in here or maybe not if it's just a warning and you're going to get a message in here as you will see later on in the video. How do we check those alarms? Uh, you always want to go to menu alarm and alarm lock and hit enter in here. Now those are going to be the active alarms that you have right now on the robot. So if the robot is stopped, you will see the active alarms here. However, the active alarm might have been caused by an alarm that occurred earlier and you want to make sure uh, what was the root cause of the alarm that you're seeing right now. So in order to do that, you want to uh, hit the history button in here, which is going to be under F3. So you just hit it and you're going to get a list of the hundreds, uh, hundred alarms that happen uh, last, uh, late, like lately. So as you can see, uh, when you scroll down, you're going to have, uh, or scroll all the way down, you're going to have hundred alarms uh, written down in here uh, and you can see what happened previous. So if something happens, if there is any fault that happens here and you hit the fault reset, it will be lo located here. So as you can see, I hit the reset and the reset shows you here in the history. I changed the teach pendant, everything it's noted in here. So that is like kind of a uh, updating history that you can see all of the alarms in. Very important guys to always check the history not just the active screen, but the history, so you are sure about the fault and what has happened. Okay, uh, now let's get to our topic and that's the user alarms. So as I said, uh, except for the hard-coded alarms that are inside your Fanuc robots that you will see because uh, all of the Fanucs have them. So for example, like the one in here, like the admin, the admin uh, error, then operator mode selected, that's something that's coded in Fanuc, but what if you want to make our own alarms? So that's why we have the user alarm option. So I already created a program here that we will work on soon. First, let me show you where you can 
type your alarms. So you want to go to menu, you want to go to setup, and you want to go to user alarm. You hit enter, and in here you have your alarms and the user message that's going to be displayed with that alarm. So in my case, I have uh, option of configuring 100 alarms, depending on the robot, you might have uh, less alarms because that's how it was set up. You can always change it. So how this will work, guys, is uh, I hope you watched my la latest video. If not, uh, please take a look at it because I talk about something that's very important. And I'm talking about uh, the importance of the alarm and how the alarm is going to act. And exactly that is going to be used uh, while making your alarms. So whenever you're going to make an alarm, you need to remember to add uh, the importance or solidity of that alarm to it. Why? Because you might not want to just send an alarm, you might want to uh, just do the warning or you want the robot to behave like this and that. And we're going to do that right now. So first thing, uh, let's name our alarms. In order to do that, you're going to choose the alarm alarm number one, and you hit enter, and you're going to type whatever you want. So first I'm going to start with a warning. So I would just type this is a warning. And let's save the alarm like this. So we're going to configure that alarm as a warning. Uh, let's do the second alarm as a pause program. So we're going to go to here, Keyword pause program. Okay, you want to hit exit. Uh, let's do alarm number three as uh, abort program and cancel motion. Abort and cancel motion. Okay. And right now we have three alarms that are already set up. Right now we gotta give the importance of those alarms, or that's how I call it, or like what is going to happen when the alarm is going to appear. So in order, uh, like in previous video, you wanna go menu, next, system, variables. You wanna hit enter. And in here we have our alarms. Let me split the screen into a double screen. And let me uh, set it so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's do this. So that's exactly the same uh, variable I went in in the latest video, user alarm uh, SEV, you hit enter. And now you have your user alarm number and what is going to happen when uh, that alarm will occur. And that goes all the way up to 100 alarms because we have 100 alarms. So as I said, uh, the first one is a warning, so we have the zero assigned to it. The second value is pause the pro the second alarm is pause program. So we're going to pause the program because we set number two. And the next one is abort and cancel motion, and that's number eleven. All right, so we have our alarms set up. Uh, we know what they will do because we set the values in here. Let's right now create a program and let's play with it. So like I said, uh, I want to do all of the motions, guys. So I already have the motions ready for you. So that's, as you can see, a simple program. Uh, let's move at the beginning of that program and let's test our alarms. Uh, so first we're going to test alarm number one. Uh, so we're just going to display a warning, so the robot is not going to stop. Uh, it's just going to show a warning here and continue with the program. How do we put an alarm in a program, guys? Pretty simple. We got to hit instruction, miscellaneous, user alarm, hit enter, and we put the number in here. So we want to use alarm number one. Also in the alarm screen, we want to use the alarm number one. Okay? So right now, when we're going to run that program, we're simply going to uh, see our this is warning message in here. A robot will not stop because it's just a warning. Remember, uh, let me do three screens. I set it as uh, zero. So 
it will not stop the robot. Okay, so let's run it and let's see. Let me slow it down so you can see how it runs. Okay, let's go. So we run it and the only thing we've seen here was this is just a warning. So when we go to our alarms, as you can see, as I, sa as I said before, there is nothing. But when we hit the history, you can see that's our alarm. This is a, this is a warning. That's exactly what we've put in here. All right, uh, we have that. Now let's test uh, how the robot is going to act if we're going to use number two. Okay, and let's run it. So we should see pause program. We should get the red fault. Uh, the robot should be running in here because it does a pause. It will stop uh, when he gets to that point. And let's see it. So let's move to the first point. Okay, let me slow it down for you so you'll see also why is it just po just paused. Okay, let's run it. We got our alarm and the robot stopped. Uh, I don't know if, you, if you've noticed, if not, please uh, take a look at the uh, video or I will just run it once more. Remember that the uh, program pointer went through that point already and read that line and caused the alarm to appear, but the robot did continue the motion until that point was not reached. Let me run the robot really slow so you see what I'm talking about. Uh, first of all, let's run it faster. Let's run it to the first point. So you will be, will be starting the program from the beginning. Okay. So I'm going to slow down the robot to like 3% and see uh, what's going to happen, how fast the alarm will show and when the robot will stop the motion. So once more, we're going to run. We're going to try to execute the whole program. The program pointer will go through that line. It will save it into the motion planner, but it's going to read the next line. So it's going to cause the alarm. You will see the alarm here, but the robot will continue its movement until he reaches this point. It's going to be interesting. Let's take a look. So I'm running the program and take a look. See, I have the alarm, but the robot is still continuing the motion until he reaches the point. That's because it's just a pause. We are not canceling the program motion uh, nor stopping the program motion. Those are two different things, guys. Remember, when you cancel the motion, that means the motion planner will start once more. When you just pause it, uh, it's going to uh, continue where he left. Okay, that was important, guys. So that's how the pause works. Now, when you go to alarm screen, We still have that alarm ready because we need to reset that alarm. As soon as we hit reset, alarm is going to be gone and we can continue uh, to run our program. And the robot will just continue going until the end. Okay, and we have uh, one more that I wanted to show you, which is abort and cancel motion. So when we're going to execute that one, the number three, the robot is just going to continue uh, and then as soon as this shows up, it will stop and it's going to go to the aborted state. So now take a look what's going to happen. I'm going to run it as slow as the previous one. I think I was running it at 3% and see when we were doing number two, the robot went to this point. But when we're going to do this one, because we're canceling the motion, the robot is going to uh, stop as soon as the fault occurs. So probably we'll stop somewhere in here. Okay, let's take a look. Let's run it. Of course, uh, let me run to the first point of the program. Okay. Let's turn off step mode. Let's slow it down. And let's run the program. Okay, and see what happened. We got our red fault. 
uh, look what the, where the robot is stopped. So the robot is stopped before the point because that's when the fault occurred. So as soon as the motion planner went through that uh, line, and um, actually the, the program pointer went through that line and continued to the next one, he executed this line, we got aborted, we canceled the motion, so we will stop mid-motion, and the robot needs to start the program once again. Because when we start to start right now, we will continue from this line, but if you are in auto, because the program was aborted, uh, you might want to start everything from the beginning. Once more, guys, take a look at uh, what's going to happen. Now, also, take a look at the, that speed depends when we stopped. So right now, we stopped a little bit closer to the point because we were running faster and when the alarm uh, occurred. So that's also important while planning your alarms. That you, you need to remember that uh, the speed is going to affect where the robot stops. Uh, anyway, guys, that was uh, something I wanted to mention about the alarms, that you want to know what type of alarm you're using and in what cases. Because, for example, if you just want to uh, let somebody know that the clamp didn't close on the robot and you want to pop up, you want to create the message for here saying that, uh, for example, clamp not closed, Uh, for sure, you, you don't want to use uh, as a stop type number 11 because that is going to abort the program and somebody will need to like home the robot and start the program once more. Probably you just want to uh, stop the, the program or pause the program and stop the motion or pause the program and cancel the, the motion. So you want to you wanna use, for example, uh, number 10 in here, not 11. Because it's going to be a fault, guys. It's very important that you set those values correctly and according to your faults. Again, when you have the clamp not closed, you just want to, in that case, pause the program and cancel the program motion. Do you want to cancel the program motion? Probably not. You just want to stop the motion. Because if you cancel the motion, uh, the robot might take a different path than expected. So it's a question for you guys uh, how you do it how you program it. Probably myself, I would use uh, number six in this case, because uh, for that for that fault, what I wanted to do is I want to pause my program, I want to stop my motion, not cancel it, and then when somebody will clear that fault, I just want to continue where I stopped. Okay, uh, I guess that would be it about the alarms, uh, how you use them, it's up to you. Again, you just remember uh, how they all come together and how they will affect the robot motion. All right, guys. All right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Uh, don't forget to leave your comments down below. Like it, subscribe, and like always, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.